welcome back to Gardening with Tracy. We're going to be setting up a straw bale garden from start to finish. You might think that straw bales are just something that farmers would use. If this is your mindset, you're missing out on a great opportunity for easy gardening. I live in the city and don't have a large lot to have a garden, so raised bed gardening is a, a perfect option for me. Straw bales can act as a raised bed garden. This can be the ideal environment for fruits and vegetables to grow. If you condition these bales correctly, they'll provide a nutrient-rich environment as the bale decomposes. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you use straw bales and not hay. Straw doesn't have as many weeds as the hay. You may still have some weeds, but it won't be nothing like if you use the hay bales. I have put down cattle cloth to help with suppressing weeds around the bales. You can also use mulch or cardboard or even additional straw just spread in the area. That'll help to keep the area clean, uh, clear of weeds and such. You want to make sure to choose a nice sunny spot for your garden. Make sure this spot gets good drainage as well as six to eight hours of sun a day. You want to position the bales with a narrow side up. The strings on the bales will help to keep the bales together if you put it this way. And the bales can last the whole season, if not longer. Sometimes you can use your bales the next year as well. I'm positioning the bales around three and a half to four foot apart. This is a good space uh, to allow good airflow in your garden um, between the plants, between the rows and it'll also help to keep your plants from getting into the walkway and you can get to your plants and harvest your crops better. Here you see I've started putting in the T-posts. So I've got to put a T-post in on each end of the rows in order to hold the two by fours that are gonna run across the top. I've been putting in the T-post and I wanted to slow it down for a moment and show you exactly what I'm doing and, and sort of explain it. Hello, here's Daisy. Daisy's helping me today. Um, but I was going to show you what you're doing is you've got these T-posts and um, most people are familiar with them if, if you're doing any gardening, but if not, that's okay. Um, the reason they're called a T-post is they're shaped like a T. If you look at, I'm going to put it this way, if you look at the end of it, there's a T there. What you want is this piece that's sticking out to the side. You want to make sure to point that towards your straw bale and get that lined up because we're going to slide a piece of wood. I'm going to notch a piece of wood that's going to go in here. It's going to go across the top for the support beam. I'm going to put on my gloves for safety for my hands. And this is what a post driver looks like. It's got a hole in it. Handles very heavy to help give you some um, force to get it in the ground. What you want to do, you want to eyeball it. Make sure you've got it about center of where you got your bales. And then just start driving. Oh, that's about right. So, that's pretty much all there is to drive in one of these posts. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my wood and we're going to set the top beams up, the support beams for the post. These two by fours will a lot for the spacing of the T posts and they're going to ensure that when the trellis wires are put in and pulled really tight that your T posts won't bend or start leaning towards the middle. So I have notched the end of these boards. It doesn't have to be really pretty. Um, I used a little four inch hand saw, skill saw, um, to do that. And what I'm doing is I'm having to take and drill a hole with a bit in the side, go through both sides, and that's where I'm going to run my wire through to support it on this post. some 16 gauge galvanized wire that I'm using. 
Uh, last year I was using a 17 gauge. This is a lot sturdier than this is. I do use this for my runner wires sometimes if I've got something that's not too heavy um, for my support. But if I run out of this, I'll use this first, the 16 gauge wire I like much better. But if I run out, I can use the 17. But for these, the 16 gauge is the best. I've run this wire through this hole and I've caught it on this tip of this T-post. That way it holds it in place. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking some of this wire and I'm running it between the T-posts. Let's, let's start one of these. I didn't get to finish the garden yesterday due to weather and so I've been working on it again today and I wanted to show you I've gotten these hog panels. I have took and attached them over two of the rows and this way I can run cucumber plants up and over this row. I've got two of these in place, placed another one down here, here and then as well I've took and put my tomato cages in and what I've done here is the tomato cages are made out of some fencing. I made it where I ran the board through and so this provides a good sturdy support for the tomatoes and I've got three on each of these rows here. So I've got it pretty well set up. I wanted to show you the, the wires that I put in place. These wires. I've got these as the trellis wires so that when you plant something in the bale, it's got something to grab onto and it can work its way up as well as if we have bad weather and it gets cold because it tends to do that here after you've planted the garden, it never fails. You've got a cold spell. You can take and run plastic across these, run a piece of plastic down and across and drape it, tin it across and it acts as a greenhouse. So it protects your plants and provides a perfect, you know, house for them during those cold, the cold weather. So now I've got the garden ready. It's time to start conditioning the bells. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button too. Um, I have some videos on conditioning the bales, but I will keep you updated with the daily progress of the garden. Thanks for watching. This has been Gardening with Tracy.